So, um, how many sensors are installed in the Wilhelm car and where are they used and uh, what, what do they do? So, at the last count, we had 501 sensors in the car. Um, the majority of those will be pressure and strain so that we can check after every run mm -hmm. that the cars do as we predicted on the uh, CFD model. Mm -hmm. 19 of those sensors will be gale sensors, we've got various blade sensors fitted and we have seven gale level sensors, uh, the capacity of mm -hmm. level sensors fitted. Okay, um, so can you just sort of give us, a, give us an impression on the car where the various tanks uh, tanks are going to be for the, for the level sensors? Okay, so this being the cockpit where Andy Green will sit through just behind a bulkhead in that cockpit in this section here is the tank for the high test peroxide so we'll have two of these gs level sensors yep. installed they'll be used mainly for refueling so that we know exactly how much we've got in because we'll have to have a, sp a specific weight mm -hmm. in there um, for each run. Mm -hmm. So for the first year's run, where the target speed is 800 miles an hour, yeah. we, will, we will fill the tank to its full uh, 1,000 kilogram mm -hmm. capacity. Yeah. So we need like a level measurement for that. Okay. And uh, the, HC, the HCP or high, high test peroxide is using, it's being used to run the, um, the, the main rocket. That's right, that's right. Main jet engine, should I say? So, the main jet engine will use uh, Jet A1 fuel. Mm -hmm. The high test peroxide will be pumped using a 500 grade horsepower mm -hmm. power engine through to the rocket system, yeah. through to the rocket, through a catalyst where it will decompose. It will come out if the catalyst has superheated steam, mm -hmm. and then there will be uh, Effectively, a rubber fuel, fuel grain mm -hmm. in that rocket tube. And that's a solid fuel? Yeah. yeah. Which will then combust to combine with the superheated steam mm -hmm. and oxygen yeah. to get us out of rust to get us up to the top speeds. And that, and that takes you from, the, the, this is the kind of difference between going from sort of 500 miles an hour to the, to the 1000 miles that's an hour, right. is it? That gives us the extra thrust yeah. to achieve those top speeds. Okay. Um, now just a couple of the other applications, we've got um, some of the blade sensors on the winglets as well, haven't we? That's right. Um, on the air brake doors we're going to have the blade 360s. And they're coming out of here, aren't they? Yeah, so when Andy gets down to 800 miles an hour, mm -hmm. he'll be able to deploy the air brake doors. And these will they open gradually, um, because obviously opening them straight out into yeah. The wind at 800 miles an hour. It's, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Which <laughs> not be the best idea. Um, so we need to know exactly where they are. Mm -hmm. So the feedback from the 360s will give us that okay. information. And uh, we're looking at blade uh, 25s for suspension, front and rear deflection. Um, and for me, I think one of the interesting, um, most interesting applications is the blade 20 because that's actually on the brake and accelerator pedal, isn't it? That's right. Um, so, they are obviously very important. Mm. Um, now, the actual disc brakes, they won't be used mm. until Andy gets down to about 200 miles an hour. Yeah. Um, and if he presses them too hard mm -hmm. or too much at that point, the, the, uh, there's still a chance that the discs, uh, the brakes can overheat. Yeah. So, we need a good uh, indication. Got yeah, yeah. And it is actually a fly by wire system, isn't it? So, so the, the, the blade 20 sensor is actually making the link between the input from Andy yeah. and actually the, the, the rocket go. That's right. Yeah. And the, um, so the signal would go from the blade 20 up to the computer, which controls the jet, mm -hmm. and then that computer would send a signal on to the jet. 